Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, wonderful. Uh, my name's Quincy Hensel. I'm the CEO of the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce, and I am here today in Mary's place, who unfortunately could not join us, but she looks forward to being back here next month. Um, I would like to take a moment to just acknowledge the horrible tragedy that took place in Lewiston just a few weeks ago. I know that our state is still reeling from what took place, and there's a lot of people that are hurting. So if we could take a moment to just observe a moment of silence for those that we've lost. Thank you. So today's presentation is gonna focus on General Dynamics Bath Ironworks. Now Bath Ironworks has become one of Maine's, or I think Maine's largest manufacturer and one of Maine's largest private employers. They are in the business of building the most sophisticated ships right here on the Kennebec River. So we're gonna hear from their president, Chuck Crew, who's gonna talk about the business of shipbuilding. They're gonna talk about the impact Bath Ironworks has not just on Maine, but on our country. And also they're gonna share some interesting efforts they have underway to really focus on attracting the workforce of the future, which I know is something everyone in this room thinks about every single day. So before we get to the presentation, I do wanna take a moment to thank our generous sponsors who make this program possible. First and foremost, I wanna thank our presenting sponsors, Martins Points Healthcare, Bernstein Shore, and Central Maine Power. Our cooperating sponsors are Bank of America and Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Reception sponsor, Clark Insurance, Key Bank, and Pretty Flaherty. Our Community Corner sponsor is Goral Palmer, and today's Community Corner is very appropriately Boots to Roots. Now, Boots to Roots is the only organization in Maine specifically focused on preparing active duty military members for immediate, immediate success when they transition to civilian life in Maine. Um, Boots to Roots provides really an incredible pipeline of workforce for businesses like all of yours. They work with active duty military and their families who are planning to transition to Maine up to a year before they come to our state. They offer assistance with personalized self-assessment, resume building, interview coaching, peer mentoring, creating business con connections, much like the event we are at right now, and networking with local employers. So I wanna thank Boots to Roots for being here and for all you do to really support the workforce in Maine. Tomorrow's leaders and entrepreneurs sponsors are AAA Northern New England and ProSearch. This program allows us to invite students, both high school and college students, to exit issues for free. And I know today we have students from Gorham High, Baxter Academy, Thornton Academy, as well as USM. So I wanna thank the students for joining us early, and please ask questions at the end. You guys always have the best questions for our presenters. Parking. So parking is still free here at USM. You do have to validate your parking in order for it to actually be free, otherwise you will get a ticket. So on the back of the program that we passed out, there is a QR code. I think they're up around the building as well. It's really simple, scan the QR code, put in your license plate, I think put in three hours with there's a code like park eggs or, hey, there it is, eggs, park, okay, it's all right there. Just read the screen. Do this while I'm speaking for the next minute and you will be totally set. Um, I also wanna thank our media partners, which are Maine Trust for Local News, WGAN, WMTW, Maine CW, Maine Biz, and Wohler and Company Photography. And last but certainly not least, a special thanks to all of our special community partners who support all of our chamber events and all of our initiatives we do throughout the year. They are Anthem, Kennebec Savings Bank, Memic, Spectrum Healthcare Partners, University of Southern Maine, and Southern Maine Community College. Um, and a huge thanks to USM, who everyone knows is our new venue for Eggs and Issues. This is our third event, and so far it has been going splendidly. So a huge thanks to the staff at USM. Now, finally, on to today's presentation. We are going to invite to the stage Chuck Crew, who's going to talk about Bath Ironworks and why Bath Built is best built.
Good morning. Thank you, Quincy, for the great introduction. My name is Chuck Crew, and I am privileged to be here with you this morning and humbled to be the president of General Dynamics Bath Ironworks. Um, much like Quincy did uh, before I start this morning, I would like to uh, take a minute and talk about the tragic events that happened in Lewiston just two weeks ago. We were affected deeply by those events and our loss of Peyton Brewer Ross, a pipe fitter, a father, a fiance, a brother, and a friend. There were some other people impacted as well. We had a ship fitter who lost his mom. We had two insulators who lost their brothers, a rigger who lost a cousin, and a designer who lost a cousin. As I walked around the deck plates on Thursday and Friday afterwards, I had a lot of people telling me stories about friends they lost. In a state like Maine, with a relatively small population, that type of event impacts a lot of people. Thank you for allowing me to acknowledge those from BIW and others in the state who were affected by this violence. So as we move into this presentation this morning, I'm gonna probably ask you a few questions and you can answer by a show of hands. So I'm gonna start off with how many of you have spoken in front of a group of people this large? Great. How many of you in this room have spoken in front of a crowd of 2,000? Oh, there's more than I thought. That's great. So on the cover, or on the screen right now, this is the christening of DDG-124 on July 29th of the USS Harvey C. Barnum, Jr. It was probably the hottest day of the summer, and the folks from BIW will tell you, and uh, the nicest day of the summer. Because as you well know, we didn't get very many nice days on the weekend this past summer. This was my second christening event, and it was probably more special this time because we had a living namesake uh, involved in his, his, the christening of his ship. Colonel Harvey C. Barnum, Jr., retired Marine Colonel and Medal of Honor recipient. He was accompanied by his wife, Martha Hill, and his extended family. And if you met him, you would know you met him. For the man of his age, he was full of, of uh, lots of energy, and uh, the gung-ho was in him for sure. We do things big at BIW, and this morning I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the big things we're doing. So as you, uh, as you watch the news, I'm sure you see there's a lot of important things going, in, going on around the world. You know, we have problems happening between Russia and Ukraine. We have the Middle East, which is now uh, uh, under some threat. And then we also have China that's out there. And, um, you know, what we do is we build the workhorse for the U.S. Navy. The destroyers are the ships that get deployed first. And if you look at the uh, deployment of ships to the Middle East today, about 50% of those ships have been built in Bath. So you can see, if you look at the list of destroyers up there, there's one that was delivered in 1987, 36 years old and still going. So that's a long time for a ship to be in the ocean and being on patrol. Here at home, we equally provide security to our families that work at BIW and to lots and lots of vendors in the state while we're building this workhorse of the US Navy. So hopefully you're starting to see that BIW is not like other businesses. 
But again, I'm going to ask some questions just to kind of make sure you get the point. How many of you have your own fire department in your business? <laughs> Armed security guards? How many of you have a street sweeper? All right, here's an easy one. How about a fork truck? All right, there we go. I just won't tell you how many we have. So you might be asking why did an aircraft manufacturing guy from the Middle East, from the Middle East, from the Midwest, uh, take up shipbuilding in Maine? You can see the Middle East is on my mind. Well, it's pretty simple. I've been taking apart things for as long as I can remember. We have pictures from when I was a kid taking things apart. And for a long time, well, for a short time, I couldn't put them back together. But my mother and I have a disagreement on when I was able to start putting them back together successfully versus when I think I was able to put them back together successfully. But as you well know, she knows probably more than I do when that happened. But I've been a mechanic my entire life. I consider myself a mechanic. I like working with tools. And it always brings me joy. If you want to find me, I'm usually in the garage putzing around with something. And one of the things I really enjoy doing is looking at, th looking at things and trying to figure out how it was built. Because to me, it, that's cool, but it may be a little weird to some of you guys. I served our country in the United States Army from 1984 to 1988. Before I separated from the Army, I was assigned to the 160th Special Operations Aviation Group as a UH-60 Black Hawk crew chief. Ironically, the only Army unit that was qualified to land on Navy ships at that time. Some kind of connection, I think, there. Serving in the 160th, I had the opportunity to do important things both at home and abroad. One of the primary reasons that I chose to come to Bath Iron Works is because I feel like I'm serving my country again. Our mission is that important. Our mission is how we keep our country protected. Our mission is how we keep our families protected. Our mission is a lot different than most companies. It's very, very important. Our nation's warfighters depend on the tools we give them to not only keep us safe, but to make sure they stay safe. And then my communications director, Julie Rabinowitz, back in the back, is probably not going to like this one, but I'm going to share it with you anyways. When people ask me, what was it like to build airplanes versus what's it like to build ships? To me, it's easy. Building airplanes was really cool, but building ships is badass. <laughs> so we're a part of General Dynamics Corporation. Uh, Bath Iron Works, um, we've been a subsidiary since 1995. I, I work for our chairman, Phoebe Novakovic. And um, I've been in the GD family for about 12 years now, I think. And I started in the aerospace segment, working for both Jet Aviation and recently Gulfstream. GD is made up of four business segments, aerospace, combat systems, technologies, and marine systems. Marine systems is the part that we're a part of. What makes uh, GD unique is our decentralized business model. So you'll note that if you look, my title is president of Bath Iron Works. In the GD system, we have a very decentralized system. And we don't have divisions. We're fully operating companies. So if you look at each one of those segments, there are 10 business operating companies that make up the power of GD. And each business operating company is, is autonomous to do what it needs to do within some certain guidelines. 
It's really a cool way to operate. So we have presidents and not general managers. We don't have divisions. And therefore, the responsibility is high, the authority is high, and the expectations are high. No pressure. One more fun fact that you might find interesting. If uh, you look at the headquarters company for a $38 billion company, there's about 150 people in the headquarters company. That goes to show, again, the authority and the power in the business operating units. A little bit about our history. Been around a while, 1888. We've delivered 429 ships. About 260 or so have been military and quite a few non-military ships. So today we focus our business around the Arleigh Burke destroyer. So let me tell you a little bit about it. This is the ship we build. It is, as I said, the workhorse of the Navy. It's a guided missile destroyer. DDG means guided missile destroyer. It provides a wide range of warfighting capabilities from threats from the air, threats from the surface, and threats from under the surface. It is designed for survivability. It is built of steel. Our ships can take a punch, but they can deliver one too. Our primary mission, again, is to keep our families safe, which keeps our nation safe. BIW also is in the business of um, designing uh, the, the um, lead yard services, which is for the DDG-51, where we design future upgrades, plan work for both our yard and our competitor in Mississippi. All this capability means that the ship is very complex. So, a couple things that are interesting here. The ship is 509 feet long. How many guys have a boat? Okay, I know it's not 509 feet long, but does your boats go 30 knots plus? Some of yours do, but this one, 509 feet, goes 30 knots plus. Carries a crew of almost 300 people. That's a lot of people on a ship. I won't go into the weapon systems to tell you what that does because I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> but 3,500 tons of steel. You know how many pounds that is? Seven million pounds in each ship. So I drive a Ford F-350. Been doing that for 20 years. That's about 1,000 Ford F-350s, just in that steel content. 255 miles of electric cable. That's from here to the space station, all on that ship. And I've got a picture I'll show you uh, as I move through the presentation about, about the uh, cable size. 70,000 gallons of paint. The average house, I looked this up last night, in the state of Maine is 1,680 square foot. So let's just use 1,700 square foot. 70 gallons, or uh, what did I figure out last night? 20 gallons, I think, per house. It's about 1,400 houses we could paint with the paint we apply on that ship. Interesting, as you, when you think of it that way, it makes it a little bit interesting. And by the way, if, I, if you haven't figured this out yet, shipbuilding is hard work. So let's talk a little bit about our footprint and the span of our business. So we have four lines of business. We have new construction, which is the largest part of our business. We have lead yard services, where we do design for construction, new DDGs, 
And as I described earlier, we also do the, that work for our competitor. We have a planning yard 51 services, which supports all 69 of the ships that are out and have been delivered, regardless of whether we have built them or our competitor built them. And then we have Planning Yard 1000, which supports the three Zumwalt class uh, destroyers that were built by BIW. This makes us a main based company with an international reach. As you can see on the map, we're not only national, but we're international. We have people all around the world in support of these ships wherever they go. We have about 500 people that work in Brunswick um, that do nothing but support the ships that are out in, the, out in the fleet through ship repairs, modernizations, and upgrades. We have to make sure these ships are ready when our country needs them. So back in Maine, this is kind of a little bit of a chart to show you where and where we're located. So the yellow on the very right over on the Kennebec River, that's the main yard. It's the main shipyard where all the, the ships are newly constructed and uh, go, into, go into the river and then go out to sea for sea trials. As you move to the left on the, on the screen, the big blotch of yellow, which is called structural fab, you can see it in the upper right hand corner, that's where we start the fabrication on every ship. We do things like bend steel. We do things like cut steel. And we make the first pieces of steel that go into the ship and that can be of a size that they're transportable over the road down to the Bath shipyard. And then if you look right next to it, you have the outfit fabrication and warehousing. Again, it's an area where we do fabrication work. That's light steel fabrication, things like vents and pipes and electrical components. That all happens in that facility. And then right behind it in the, in the very far back, that's our, one of our warehouses where we store lots and lots of material to build these ships. So um, rounding out the shipyard is on the upper right, lower left is our life cycle support. That's where we support the lead yard services. Next to it's the training academy and the trade learning center. We know how to train people, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And then lastly, the technology center where all of our engineers are at this time. So just because I know people like statistics, I'm gonna give you a few statistics. Our facilities take up 210 acres three manufacturing sites, five off-site locations, 85 buildings, 1.2 million square foot of production space, 563,000 square foot of office space, and 438 square foot of warehousing space. It's a lot of space. It's a lot of space to keep managed. About 2,500 people work on our day shift down in the main yard, and then we have several hundred that work on second and third. We're the third largest employer in Brunswick with 1,000 employees across our facilities. We have almost another 1,000 employees in West Bath and 35 down here in Portland. So you can see in the state of Maine, we have a little bit of a reach. And just so I'm not confusing, we are the largest manufacturer in the state. So one of the things um, that you've seen is that we're a global, country, a global, global company with a large and a unique statewide presence and impact. Over the, la over the last five year period, BIW operations has supported over 8.4 billion in total economic impact to the state. BIW has supported more than 1.8 billion in total economic output in 2021 alone, with more than 980 million contributing to the state's GDP. We make up 17% of the state's production GDP, with only 12% of the workforce. 
Each year, we buy from more than 300 suppliers here in Maine and more than 1,500 suppliers nationally. Like I said in the beginning, we do big things at BIW. The big things continue. Since, we per since GD purchased the, the yard back in uh, 1995, we've invested almost a billion dollars into, into the yard. When you think about what we do, building ships with lots of heavy steel, out in the elements for the most part, you know, the ships aren't covered. People, Mainers, are working out in the weather all year long. We need large and specialized equipment that can take a lot of wear and tear. We are also investing in better ways to build in a safe environment for our team and better, higher quality results that as well increase the throughput. We've recently announced our new material kitting terminal coming online to improve the way we deliver parts. You know, we're trying to look at what other businesses do, like Amazon. Everybody can get something the next day or the day after from Amazon, so we think, why can't we do it? We built a phone app, and the technicians can click on the phone app, send, it to, send a signal to the material kitting terminal, and the part's going to show up within four hours. Pretty impressive. We plan to make more announcements as we move into the future. Ships under construction. Right now we have seven under construction, but I'm just showing you five because these ones look like ships for the most part. One of the ships that's very special to me is, is the Lewis Wilson Jr. It's DDG-126, our first flight three ship. So it's right there on the right-hand side, second one down. And it really kind of looks like a ship, but if I took that picture today, it looks like a ship. And I'm gonna show you that here in a few minutes. We have been building these ships for almost 40 years. And during this time period, the Navy's continually upgraded them so that we have had the ability to use those to defend as the threats in the world increase. This Flight 3 ship that we're building is vastly more powerful than its predecessors. The radar alone on it is 30 times better than the one we're building right in front of it. So that goes to tell you the sophistication. So to adapt to these upgrades, changes, and adjustments that we get from the Navy, we have to continuously be improving our manufacturing strategy. In the next several slides, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit how we build the ships. So they're more of a collage. There we go. So I'm gonna take you through these for a minute. Oh, we went too far. Here we go. In the early stages of construction, we have engineers and marine arch architects that design the ships, the ship's hull form. They design things like the ship systems. You know, when you think about a ship, when it leaves port, it's not coming back. So they have to be able to take food, water, handle trash, medical, medical supplies. They have to be self-sufficient because once a ship leaves, leaves the port, it's an island. So when you think about all the things that go into designing a ship, it's really, really important that we get it right on the front side. As we move across the top, you'll see Strukfab and a picture of a mechanic there cutting a piece of steel. You can see by the picture, it's a pretty large piece of steel. It's probably three inches thick. Moving on, just in the upper right, right next to the structural fab, uh, you see a welder welding a couple panels together. Moving to the right, your left, um, you'll see in the uh, 
AB Hall, where we're putting, we take the smaller assemblies and make larger assemblies. So in these next several slides, I've put some circles in there so you can see there's a man in the circle just to give you a relative context of the size. Well, one of my favorite pictures is the blast and paint picture there. Can you see how, can you get the relative size of that entryway into that tank? I mean, if you look at the guy's head and compare that to the opening and think you've got to get through there, look at the equipment that they have on. They've got to drag air hoses and sandblasting hoses inside there, blast it. Once they get that done, the painters go in and paint it. That's some of the things that we do to build ships and why I tell you shipbuilding is hard. In this slide, this is when we were after blast and paint and this is down in our outfit hall. You can see the ship pieces are getting larger. We build ships in the mega units so they usually have three or four levels on them at this point. And we also join the units together so they become, the ship not only gets taller, but it gets wider. Again, you can see the, in the circle, we've got some people just for size reference. So the top guy, he's, he's welding a 10 inch piece of pipe that we use all over the ship. The fuel line that goes to the engines is eight inches. You know what it is on your car? On my truck, it's three eighths. The welder up underneath the ship, he's joining the two pieces of ship together. And then on the big picture down here, where the circle of the guy is standing on the top, that's two ships joined, two units joined. And that's just the beginning of the size. And then on this picture at the very bottom, you can see, you can actually count one, two, three, four decks high on that ship. One unit, four decks high, joined to another unit. This is um, one of my favorite slides in this deck. And this is why I said uh, 126 is probably uh, near and dear to my heart right now is because it's the first ship that's actually um, getting erected since I've been there. So um, I'm watching this ship getting built every day. So you can see in the upper right hand corner the date of 620. So this picture was taken and if you look really really close you'll see that there's another ship in front of all those colored units. We tried to kind of block it out with the outline of what a full ship looks like. So the way you look at this chart is the ship and all its color-coded pieces kind of goes at a diagonal on the screen. And then on the rest of the screen, we've color-coded all the pieces and where they go on the ship. What's incredible about this is right around the 1st or 2nd of July is when we started to erect the ship. And that's what we call it. It's erecting it. You're, you're building a ship out in the yard. We started the erection process. And um, we know we got this one right because you got all the pieces right there ready to go. You see? Everything is stacked up ready to go. So this picture was taken on September 5th. And you can see the blue dot area are all the areas that are complete. And you can look down here at this drawing and see all the blue, blue areas that are complete. But you'll notice that I drew a black circle. That's all complete now. The yellow part is complete. The brown part is complete and the pink part just got put up yesterday. So this ship looks like a ship today. And that was in the last 90 days. So there's a whole bunch of welders on that ship, putting that ship together and welding it 
out in the elements. So when we came in here this morning, it started to snow. The shipbuilders are out there working in the snow. So, you think you're done when you got the ship erected? Nope. Nope, not even close. So, anybody in here build something, a product? Okay, good. How many, do you measure your man hours in seven digits? Yeah. Yeah. We do. We do. We do. So as you can see, I can get pretty passionate about this, and I can talk about this all day long, but ship's completion is something that we, uh, we spend a lot of time on as well. All right, so just to tell you and reinforce the fact that what we do is big, you'll see that there is a person standing down below the ship in the dry dock. It's big. So I, I have a lot to say, and I know uh, I know I'm running a little bit long because someone sent me a signal. But I really uh, I could really talk about this all day. But I know you probably have other things to do. So let's talk about another thing that's very important to me, and that's our shipbuilders. Our shipbuilders are amazing, and um, without them, just like you your business would be nothing. And that's one of the big issues that we have here in the state of Maine, is making sure that we can get the people we need to do the work. So I'll give you a quick view of how we pull workers from the state of Maine. 15 of 16 counties we pull people from. When you think about you know, the numbers I gave you about the economic impact, that's because people call home everywhere in the state except one county. And when they get their paychecks, they spend it all over the state. And I've got my HR team working on that last county. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about what our workforce looks like. So um, as a business that is basically uh, tracking to what the Navy wants and how their demand signal is. Uh, over the years, we've had times when we've hired a lot and we've had times where we didn't hire very many. And so uh, as a result, and you look at this chart, you can see that our workforce is relatively young. You'll see that basically about 60% of our workforce is less than five years and about 77% less than 10. Now, a little tidbit that you might want to keep in mind is it takes us about five years to get a shipbuilder proficient. Okay, So some people would feel not very good about this, but to me, I feel pretty good. We've just refreshed our workforce. And those skills that they're building today are going to be the skills that carry us on into the future. This page has got probably uh, one of the worst statistics on it, and I'll point that out to you. But before I do, 6,650 employees. Big footprint. Almost 1,000 veterans and uh, just over 900 women in our workforce. But the, the, the uh, thing that's very interesting and difficult for us is that if you look at that third bullet, since 2019, we've hired 5,700 people, but we've netted 900. That's huge. That's huge. And um, sure, we had some issues and some problems, you know, where we didn't, didn't maybe have our pay scale set right. We had, the, we had COVID that impacted us and everybody else raised their pay scales and you know, because we have five unions, I could give you all the excuses why. We don't have housing, people don't have places to live, right? But at the end of the day, we can't do that. We gotta be much, much better. 
and we're taking steps today to make sure that we are better for the future. that doesn't make the hair on your arm stand up, I don't know what does. So thank you very much. Um, I guess we'll take a few questions if we have time. <laughs>